Now, if you've got any portraits where the eyes are so dark that no matter what you do, there's just no detail and brightening them up just makes them look even worse, here's two techniques that I have for you that work an absolute treat. So I'm going to show you two techniques. The first one uses traditional tools within Photoshop that we've had for a long time. The second one, though, uses AI that's in Photoshop, and the results are mind-blowing. But let's start off using the first technique, which is using traditional tools within Photoshop. So here's the example of this portrait here where we can see the eyes have just got absolutely no detail in them whatsoever. We want to make it look as if there is some detail in there, even if we have to fake it. So what I'll do is I'm going to first of all go to the bottom of the Layers panel and click to add a new blank layer. Then I'll go to the toolbar and choose the elliptical marquee tool. I'll zoom in just a little bit closer on this eye. And I'll hold down the shift key and drag out so we have a circle. And I'm going to use the space bar to drag and position this so that it's over the iris. And you can see as I do that, what I'm actually doing here is leaving just a little bit of darkening around the outside. That's going to make the eyes really stand out anyway. So we'll keep that marching ant selection there. We're on this blank layer. Then I'm going to go to the edit menu and choose fill. And from the contents menu just here, I'm going to choose 50% gray and then click OK. You'll notice still that I'm keeping this uh, marching ant selection going around here like so, because now I want to go to the filter menu, choose noise and add noise. Now let me just put that there and we'll zoom in so we can see in this preview as well. Now the amount of noise that I want, it wants to look really grainy. Those of you who are old enough to remember old style TVs when they used to go off at night, this is the kind of grain that you'd see with that hissing sound. That's the kind of amount you want. And for this picture here, it's a 61 megapixel uh, camera image. I'm using around about 25, 26 on the amount. That seems to be just right for this portrait here. Also notice as well, that we have Gaussian in the distribution selected and also monochromatic. So that's looking good. I'll click OK. And I still keep the marching ant selection going around just for now because next I go to the filter menu, I choose blur and radial blur. Now, by default, when you come into the radial blur, you're going to be on spin. And this is what it's going to kind of look like. It's going to see here that this uh, illustration here showing that what this is going to do, it's going to make the image look as if it's spinning. And this is what we used to use years ago to make it look as if wheels on a car were spinning, for example. But what we want to do is change it over here from the blur method from spin to zoom. So we're going to go to zoom. The quality here, I tend to leave it just on good, to be honest with you. That tends to work just fine. And the amount... We can see, look, if I increase the amount over in the preview, this is what we're going to get. It's kind of like this, um, I don't know, Star Wars effect when they go to hyper speed, whatever they called it, when they used to have all the stars racing past the screen. It's that kind of a look. And obviously, the higher it goes, the more of that you get. But we don't want to go too far with this. So for this one here, uh, we're going to go down to maybe around about 11, 12, something like that, maybe even 13. I don't know. 11 or 12 works just absolutely fine. And if I zoom in, Actually, let's just click OK. Now zoom in. Look, you can see what that's done to that there. Just it's kind of blur going in towards the center. Now I can get rid of this selection going around the outside. So I'll go to Select and Deselect, or I could use the keyboard shortcut of Command on Mac or Control on Windows and the letter D on my keyboard. That now gets rid of it. All right, so now that I've got this over one eye, I do need to think about the other eye. So what I'll do is I'm just going to press down the Command key on Mac, Control key on Windows, and press J to put a copy of that now in the layer stack. I'll get the Move tool, and I'll drag it, and I'll place this copy over the eye. So we've got both of them in place like so. Now, to make these easy to manage, so I only have to use maybe one mask, because we are going to use a mask in a moment, I'm going to highlight both of them by shift-clicking on the one underneath, and then I'll go to the fly out menu in the upper right hand corner of the layers panel and I'll just choose new group from layers and I'll just call it eyes. There we go. So now look, both of them are in there. Doesn't look so good at the moment, but what I need to do is to just add a layer mask now to this group. I've got a white layer mask. I'll get a brush using a black foreground color and I'm just going to brush it off the areas where we don't want the eye or the fake eye texture to be. Now, I can lower the opacity of this group to help me to see where I'm brushing so I don't do too much. So I'll just lower it down a little bit and I'm going to brush off just like this. 
The brush I'm using, you'll notice here, look, it's not all, it's not completely hard, it's not completely soft. I've got it kind of like a third of the way when it comes to the hardness. So I'll brush around the top part there, take off the eyelid, I'll brush over the pupil, so we get the pupil back there. And then I'm also just going to go very carefully around the outside just to soften that down, because that was obviously very, very sharp outline. We want to soften that just a touch like so. And then I'll come over to the other eye and do exactly the same. So I'll brush it off the eyelid and the eyelashes. We'll take it off where the pupil is, and then we'll just kind of uh, just soften around that outside just so it's not so sharp as what it currently is. Something like that will be absolutely fine. All right, let's take the opacity back up to 100. And now we're going to come to this uh, the light, the uh, blend mode for this group at the moment, which is set to set uh, to pass through. So I'm going to change this one to hard light. And that's the effect we're getting now. Look, and I can lower the opacity. So maybe around about there, it's starting to look good. And you can see now, look, we're faking the look of the texture within the eyes. We can take it a step further to really help with this by now adding a hue and saturation adjustment layer. So I'll come to the hue and saturation. I'll click on that. Let's just move the eye so we can see it. Now, what I do in here, I only want to affect the eye, which is the layers below the group just here. I don't want it to affect the main image. So I need to use this little thing here called a clipping mask. So I'll press on that. You'll see the hue and saturation move across, and we get this like a down arrow, uh, down facing arrow here, meaning it's only going to affect the layer or the group directly below. So now I can click on colorize. Let's just change the hue. Let's go for something that's going to give us a bit of a brownish kind of color. Increase the saturation maybe, and let's just darken it down, something like that. So you can see. Look now. There we go. Look, we're faking the look of the texture within the eye. And this is a technique that I've used for a number of years. People would never know you've used it, but it does add a, just a tiny bit of interest back in the eyes rather than being completely black and featureless, kind of like shark's eyes. So again, you can play around with this, you know, increasing the brightness, depending on how strong you want that look to be. You can play around with the opacity of the group and the hue and saturation and what have you. So there's lots you can do with it, but that's the first technique. Now, before I show you the second technique using the AI, which is just phenomenal, I just wanted to give you the heads up about my photography masterclass on school that you can jump in and experience for free using the seven day free trial. Now in the masterclass, we have weekly live calls, workshops, courses, special guest seminars, an active forum with members from all over the world and a whole lot more. You just need to click on the link for the seven day no commitment fee trial that I've put in the description. Now though, let's take a look at this AI technique, which I discovered very, very recently. So let's just get rid of what we've already done and go back to the state where we were, where we had featureless eyes just like so. So for this technique, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the um, selection brush tool over here from the toolbar, which I absolutely love. I'll zoom in and I'm just going to brush around the iris just here. Again, look, I'm making sure that I leave a little bit of a dark area going around the outer part just here. So I'll just brush into it there. I can hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Window to turn it to Subtract. So then I can just kind of tidy that up like so, making sure it's circular over the pupil, let's just brush off that little bit there. That's looking good on that one. You can see, look in the top corner here, top left hand corner, by default it's on add, but when we hold down the option key, it's like coming up to here and clicking this. We don't need to. We can just hold down the option key or alt key and temporarily use subtract. So I now need to just do the other eye. So again, I'll just come in, paint around the iris, leaving that dark area around the outside like so. Then I'll hold down the option key just to take it off areas I don't want to, like there, and just kind of improve that area just over the pupil. All right, so this is what we've got now then. This is where our selection is going to be. I'm going to come out of the uh, selection brush tool now and just press V to go to the move tool so we now see the active selection over the iris. Then what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come over to the generative fill, the contextual taskbar just here. And what I'm going to type in is iris identification pattern. That's that unique pattern that we all have in our iris that basically when we go to scanners and they kind of scan your eyes, it's a unique, it's like a fingerprint. That's what it's called, iris identification pattern. That is what I'm going to type in the contextual task field just up here. So we go iris identification 
pattern. And then we'll click on generate. Now, I can't guarantee that this is going to work straight away. We might need to do a couple more generations to get the look that we want. But this is now going to add in real eye texture, the look of the real iris identification pattern. And it'll do that within roughly 10 to 12 seconds. So let's just zoom in on the eyes just here. Here's our first three generations. Okay, I guess. I think, you know, what I could do with this one here is because of this gentleman's uh, ethnicity, I'm going to put in brown iris identification pattern. That might help it a little bit more. So let's just click on generate to see what that gives us. Again, within roughly 10 to 12 seconds. You can see here, look, it's using the Firefly Image 3. If you do this a few times and find you don't get the results that you want, you can change it to another Firefly Image like Firefly Image 1 just to see what you prefer. But let's have a look now. Let's go to that one and that one. All right, I think I'll generate it again. Just see what we get. Again, another 10 to 12 seconds. No, there's almost no smoke and mirrors here. I want you to see this exactly how it works for me when I'm doing it. All right, nearly there. Let's have a look. That one, that one, that one, that one. Ah, there we go. Now that one is looking better. Can you see the, the texture in there? Look, we've actually started to get some texture in just like so. Also on the other eye as well. So that's already looking better. Even if I zoom out, look, we're getting detail within the eye. But now that we've got that, we don't need to leave it like that. We've got some detail in the eye, some proper texture. Let's now take it a step further and start to enhance that even further now. So what I'll do is I'm going to take this into Camera Raw. So let's go Filter. I could save this and go back to Lightroom if I'm working from Lightroom. But I'll just go to the Camera Raw Filter. Let's just zoom in on this one just here. I'll go to the Masking and I'll get a brush. And I'll just paint around the iris on both eyes just there. And now look, I can... If I come down to the light section, I can... Br there we go. Look at that. Look at the detail in the eyes now. When we do brighten them, there is something there to brighten. So we've got exposure, a bit of contrast. But with eyes, the magic definitely happens when we come to the effects section here. So increased detail in that texture just there, that micro contrast, bit of clarity. Absolutely brilliant. Look at this. There we go. Something like that. Liking that. I might even increase saturation. Let's have a look. There we go. And then let's just click on OK. Wow. <laughs> there you go. I now can take it one step further. We could maybe add a new blank layer. I could go back to that elliptical marquee tool and drag out, holding down the shift key, look, holding down the shift key to create a perfect circle, like so, and then drag out another ellipse just so that it's overlapping but leaving a little bit at the bottom. So it's going to take away the majority of that circle and leave this little bottom bit here, maybe. Then what I could do is go to the Edit menu, choose Fill, and from the Fill menu here, the contents, I'll choose White and click OK. I'll get rid of the selection. We'll go to Select and Deselect. And then what I could do is, let's have a look at the Blend Modes. Let's come down to Overlay, and then I'll just blur that just a little bit. Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Only needs to be blurred just a touch like so, and we can look. There's before and after, before and after. But when we look at the eyes, when we compare to what we did have before, let's have a look. Turn all the other layers off apart from the original background layer look. That's before, that's after, before and after. And if you think the effect there is too strong, you could obviously just put all the layers that you've done now, the generative AI layer and the additional layer with that catch light, you could put those into a group, so new group from layers, and then just lower the opacity on it just to bring it down a touch. But you can see there, look, that just really does bring the eyes to life. So there you go. That's just two techniques that you've got there. One, traditional tools in Photoshop and one modern day AI technology that we can use, which does bring in real iris identification pattern to get that proper texture in there. So there you go. Two techniques. Use them as and when. I'll catch you in the next video.